What's up, my comic comrades? With Ant-Man returning to the big screen in Quantum Mania, we're bringing you all another versus battle with Scott Lang and Ant-Man going up against Adam Smasher. It's a debate that became more popular once Adam Smasher premiered in Black Adam. People saw two size-changing heroes and automatically wanted to know who would win in a fight. Well, today we're going to give you our two cents on the topic and tell you which character we think would come out on top and why. Keep in mind, we will be talking about the comic versions of these characters, not their live-action counterparts. With that said, let's jump in and see who's going to get the W. As always, we start with a little backstory for each character to lay down the groundwork for powers and abilities. First up is Scott Lang, who first appeared in Avengers 181 in 1979, and as Ant-Man in Marvel Premiere issue 47 of the same year. Scott Lang was an electronics expert who couldn't make enough money for his family, so he became a thief to support them. The problem was, he wasn't that good at being a thief and eventually got caught and arrested. A little after his release, he learned that his daughter Cassie had a serious heart condition, and the only person who could save her was a doctor that was being held captive by Darren Cross. So Scott stole Henry Pym's Ant-Man suit to save the doctor so she could then save his daughter. He ends up saving the doctor and in turn, his daughter's life. The crazy thing is, is that Hank Pym knew and even watched Scott steal his Ant-Man suit. He was basically observing him in secret to see how he would do. And when Scott goes to return it, Hank lets him keep it, being like, nope, you're the new Ant-Man now. He became an affiliate of the Fantastic Four and a full-time member of the Avengers. For a period of time, he even dated Jessica Jones. He was later killed by the Scarlet Witch along with Vision and Hawkeye in Avengers Disassembled. But of course, heroes do not stay dead for long in comics. He returned to life in the 2011 miniseries, The Children. Crusade. And boom, just like that, you got the quick and dirty version of Scott Lang's origins. And speaking of shrinking things, how's your hairline doing? Is it holding firm or is it pulling back like the beach at low tide? If it's the latter, believe me when I tell you, you're not alone because two out of three guys experience some form of hair loss by the time they reach 35. And that's where today's sponsor, Keeps, comes in. They've helped hundreds of thousands of guys maintain their luscious locks because Keeps offers clinically proven and personalized treatment plans at an affordable price. You start by talking to one of their licensed physicians without having to visit a medical professional's office. And they will choose the products and treatments that will work best for you. Then to make it even easier, you'll skip the lines at the pharmacy with your treatment being delivered right to your front door every three months. The sooner you get started with Keeps, the sooner you'll start to see results. So stop procrastinating. Keeps will also have your back throughout the process with 24 seven access to their network of expert medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists who will answer whatever questions you might have along the way. Because hair loss stops with Keeps. Just head over to keeps.com forward slash variant comics and get on the road to hair town by setting a time to talk with one of Keeps licensed medical professionals professionals online. And when you sign up with our link, you'll get 50% off your first order. Again, that is keeps.com forward slash variant comics, or use our link in the description to get started with Keeps Now. With that knowledge in your hands, let's move on to Adam Smasher. Albert Rothstein is the man that would become Adam Smasher. He's the godson of the original Adam. We see how Albert became the Adam Smasher in Files and Origins issue one. In the issue, we see Albert sitting in his apartment in Manhattan. As he narrates saying, funny the things that seem important. When I was young, being different, unique. Big Al Rothstein, my own man. You look back at you, Year, two, five, it seems so lame. A mohawk for God's sake. Nuclon? Why did I think that was a cool name? And that dumb costume? No, actually, the first costume wasn't so bad. As he looks at old pictures of himself and his dad, the first Adam. He continues to say, but why didn't I see? The heritage, what came before, not just my godfather, Al Pratt, the Atom, all of them, the JSA, the All-Star Squadron, some of them, Al for one, weren't even as old as Infinity Inc. when they donned their masks for the first time. And there wasn't a manual for what was expected of them. They wrote the book. Some died then, others died later. And all I wanted was to be different, distant from their memory. We then see him putting on what we now know as his Atom Smasher costume as he continues narrating saying, what a fool I was. Should have done this a long time ago. Honor Al Pratt. Honor the memory of my grandfather, Terry Curtis, Cyclotron, whose atomic physiology I inherited. Goodbye, Nuclon. Hello, Atom Smasher. And just like that, he becomes Adam Smasher for the first time, donning his new costume with the name itself being a nod to both Cyclotron and Adam. If you want more backstory on Adam Smasher, we did a full episode on him, which you could watch right here. But now it's time to move on to the main event, powers and abilities, which is what's going to determine the winner of this fight. Let's start with Ant-Man. Ant-Man first and foremost has the ability to shrink to the size of an ant, hence the name Ant-Man. He does this by carrying pin particles in his belt. But not only could he shrink down to the size of an ant, he could also shrink down to subatomic levels, being able to enter subatomic universes. Yeah, he can get so tiny, he's invisible to the naked eye. The crazy part is Ant-Man maintains his strength even when tiny. But not only can he shrink incredibly small, he can grow incredibly large. That's right, the dude can get massive and crush people like ants, which is ironic. Essentially, Ant-Man is a master when it comes to size manipulation, being able to shrink incredibly small or grow massive. Scott also controls ants slash insects with his cybernetic ant helmet. This may seem silly, but Scott can call upon trillions of ants and insects to swarm just about anyone or anything, which I gotta say would be quite nightmarish. 
Yuck. His helmet also gives him limited air supply. Lang is an expert in electronics. Don't get me wrong, he's not like Tony Stark, but he's very talented nonetheless. All around, he's a character that may seem like a joke, but he is very deadly if need be. Next up, we have Adam Smasher. Due to inheriting some of his father's abilities, Albert has superhuman strength, capable of being able to tear off sides of armored ships. He can crush cars, throw tanks, and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with characters like Solomon Grundy. Hell, he even punched Black Adam into space. Yeah, he one-punched one of the strongest characters in comics into space. He's incredibly strong and resilient. You could chuck cars at the dude and he's not going to be faced. He's also bulletproof, like I'm talking about high caliber rounds bulletproof. But of course, most notably, he has the ability to increase his size, which also increases his strength. Al can grow up to 100 feet tall. Besides just getting really tall and strong, he also can increase or decrease his molecular density, meaning he can make himself incredibly solid or he can phase through objects. He could even alter his mass to make his blows hit with more force. This is why he's so incredibly durable. And the same reason he was able to do things like punch Black Adam into space. But then he could also phase through things like Martian Manhunter, which definitely comes in handy. He's similar to Ant-Man, but has the added bonus of crazy super strength and durability. Altogether, he's a pretty formidable force. But now that you know what each character is capable of, it's time to decide a victor. And the victor would be... Ant-Man. The Atom Smasher is clearly the stronger character, but Ant-Man's insane shrinking abilities and control over ants and insects would give him the win. Ant-Man theoretically could shrink down to such a small size, he could enter the bloodstream of Atom Smasher and mess things up inside of Atom Smasher, bringing him down from the inside out, which is extremely morbid, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. And as we've seen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Ant-Man's shrinking and enlarging is almost like teleporting. He's so quick with it, I feel like he'd be able to outmaneuver Atom Smasher, because though Atom Smasher is stronger, he wouldn't be able to catch Ant-Man. Basically what it all comes down to is that Ant-Man could shrink to subatomic levels as well as grow several stories just like Atom Smasher. Now he may not be as strong as Atom Smasher, but again, his control over insects and the ability to shrink to subatomic levels gives him several ways he could quite literally take Atom Smasher out from the inside. I mean, come on, you all remember that running gag around the internet how Ant-Man could have theoretically beaten Thanos if he would have went up a certain hole and enlarged and, you know, just got rid of Thanos? And that's just one scenario. All in all, Atom Smasher is a great character, but for our money, the ability to shrink to subatomic levels just means it doesn't matter how strong Adam Smasher is, you can't beat what you can't see. But that's just our two cents. Everyone has their own opinion. Who do you think would win this fight? Let us know down in the comments. First up for the week of February 15th, we have Hulk issue 12. Titan is coming. Bruce Banner has finally found paradise. Revered as a god and with no fear of hurting everyone around him, for the first time in a long, long time, things are looking pretty good for the Hulk. Now we have Batman Beyond the White Knight issue 8. It all ends here, with the future of Gotham City at stake. Bruce Wayne leads an attack on Wayne Powers building to take down Blight and his minions once and for all. Next we have Gunslinger Spawn issue 17. As the names on Gunslinger's list get crossed out one by one, he starts to realize that the last few might require a little help from an old friend. Fourth on the list is Swamp Thing Green Hell issue 2. Alec Holland has been summoned back to the land of the living by John Constantine himself which is quite the surprise for the Parliament of Trees. Will Alex save the day or refuse to help John Constantine and the planet? And finally, we have Star Wars Bounty Hunters issue 31. Valance is out for revenge against Darth Vader. Can Tonga and her team save the fellow bounty hunter from a fatal confrontation? And that's gonna bring today's episode to a close, but if you like this episode, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you like all of our content, like, subscribe, and comment, it helps us out. But other than that, I'll see you next time when I talk about all things comics.